I wear $150 slacks. I wear silk shirts. I wear $800 suits. I wear a gold watch. I wear a perfect D flawless three carat ring. I change cars like other guys change their fucking shoes. I'm a thief. We received some pretty sad news recently with James Caan having passed away at 82. And of course, he was one of the greatest big screen tough guys of all time, ranking up there with contemporaries like Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. So what is the best James Caan movie? Most of you would probably say The Godfather, right? You'd have a pretty good point because his Sonny Corleone was indeed iconic, but would we really call it a James Caan movie? I always thought of The Godfather kind of as a Marlon Brando or an Al Pacino movie, but if we're talking true James Caan movies, for me, nothing quite beats Michael Mann's 1981 classic, Thief. In this one, James Caan plays Frank, a hardened ex-con turned professional thief who prizes his independence above all things. This puts him at odds with the local organized crime racket whose boss, Leo, played by Robert Prosky in his first role, surprisingly because he was already middle-aged at this point, Leo wants to bring Frank into the fold, but complicating matters are the fact that Frank's dying ex-mentor, played by no other than Willie Nelson, desperately needs parole, and that can only be made possible by Leo's influence. And there's also a wounded waitress named Jessie, played by Tuesday Well, with whom Frank falls in love and impulsively decides to start a family with. So against his better instincts, he ends up joining Leo's crime racket. But the fallout is pretty rough because if Frank wants to stay independent, it's gonna cost him everything he holds dear. So this one, of course, is written and directed by Michael Mann, and it has an amazing score by Tangerine Dream. Thief was Mann's first feature film, but it wasn't his first time making something. He had already had a 10-year TV career that included time spent as a writer on Starsky and Hutch, the TV show Vegas, and he also directed a really well-received TV movie called The Jericho Mile, which is uncompromisingly tough for TV and is a pretty rough prison film and worth checking out. So that put him on the map in a huge way, the same way that Duel did for Steven Spielberg. Both movies, you see, were TV films that got European theatrical releases and made them kind of a big deal. And this was kind of a path that a lot of directors took back in the 70s when TV movies weren't necessarily seen as an embarrassment. So writing his own script, but basing it on a book called The Home Invaders by Frank Homier, who was an actual real-life thief and was in prison by the time this movie went into production, Mann worked with a young producer named Jerry Bruckheimer, and he was able to make a pretty radical film for 1981 that anticipated a lot of the stylish MTV flourishes that would define the decade's pop culture. And indeed, Michael Mann himself would come to epitomize this style with his own TV show, Miami Vice. Sadly, despite some really good reviews, Thief was a box office flop grossing under $5 million. Part of this may be due to the fact that the production company United Artists was teetering on the verge of bankruptcy throughout the year thanks to a little movie or rather a huge movie that just made very little box office called Heaven's Gate directed by Michael Cimino. The movie however was very well received in Europe but when it played Khan it actually had a different title instead of calling it Thief they called it Violent Streets, which is nowhere near as cool of a title as Thief, right? So even if the movie wasn't a hit, it did still give Mann's career a temporary boost, although his next film, The Keep, wound up being such a tortured production that Mann has actually blocked its DVD and Blu-ray release to this day. You still can't find a high-definition version of it, of The Keep, that is. And it sent him back to TV, where he took the style of Thief, and married it to the classic cop show formula with the iconic Mammy Vice, which of course then led to Manhunter, Crime Story, and then his big classics like The Last of the Mohicans, Heat, The Insider, etc, etc. So, James Caan always said that Thief was probably his greatest role, and I have to agree with him. It's funny how some movies are really well received when they come out, but then are all but forgotten in the decades to follow. But then there are others that can barely make a peep and go on to generate a substantial following years and years and years afterwards. And that's basically what a cult movie is. And I would say that Thief is definitely a cult movie. While many of you may be questioning me, including it as a best movie you never saw, the fact is not enough people have seen Thief. It's one of those movies that 
a lot of film fans maybe feel like they've seen and are so familiar with the movies and inspired like Man's Own Heat, which is basically like a Thief 2.0 or Nicholas Winding Refn's Drive, but maybe actually haven't seen it for themselves. For example, a good friend of mine is one of the biggest Michael Mann fans in the world, but he had actually never seen this, partly because up to a few years ago, it was only in modest DVD circulation, but the movie has seen a great resurgence because the Criterion Collection has clearly taken a great interest in it and has given it kind of a refurbished, gorgeous new transfer. So it's easier to find now than it ever was before. Thief Now is available for any serious film connoisseur, and it's definitely the kind of movie that's almost overwhelming at first, so a couple of viewings are probably mandatory if you're going to really appreciate it. There's so much style going on that it's almost dizzying, but there's a lot to love about Man's movie, which controversially remains my favorite film of his, although it's very close between this and Heat. So James Caan's Frank is one of the all-time great anti-heroes. Having studied real-life ex-cons to get into the part, Caan's performance is incredibly authentic in the way that he tries to affect a certain level of sophistication, much in the way that somebody would front toughness in jail. What is that? That is the flawless. 3.2 carats, emerald cut. But he's also prone to snap into a rage whenever threatened, such as a bit where he pulls a gun on a hapless bouncer, which actually is a bearded William Peterson in his first ever role. He's somewhat tamed by his love interest, a bent around the block waitress played by Tuesday Weld. Both of them go into the relationship with their eyes open, almost negotiating the process of falling in love, with Can wanting to fulfill the prison dream he once had of having a family, even if it's this very wish that puts him in the clutches of Robert Prosky's Leo. Like Khan, the rest of the cast is pitch perfect. Weld was a 60s sex symbol and was a little bit older by 1981, and she fits the world-weary but vulnerable part to a T. Prosky is also very underrated as the sly, business-like villain who's anything but typical of the genre, as he's this kind of kindly grandfather-like figure that we all think is going to be a wonderful guy, but turns out to be a snake. I'll whack out your whole family. People will be eating them for lunch tomorrow in their wimpy burgers and not know it. You'll get paid what I say. While their roles are smaller, Willie Nelson's very effective in this, as is Jim Belushi in his first ever role. Jim Belushi plays Can's partner in this, and Willie Nelson is his ex-cellmate, and both convey a massive amount of loyalty to their patron. And of course, don't miss Dennis Farina, who was actually a cop at the time this was being shot, in a brief part at the end as Prosky's muscle. Don't say a word to me, Sidney. Don't say a fucking word to me. I'll get up and I'll bury this telephone in your head. As good as the writing, acting, and visuals are, and it's particularly striking for its gritty era, looking a lot more like a French film than an American crime drama, Thief is probably best remembered for the amazing score by Tangerine Dream. Tangerine Dream was a German music collective that was huge in the 80s, and it's interesting to see how the score initially dated the movie with Can ribbing man about it in the mid-90s Laserdisc commentary track that's definitely worth a listen. But now it makes it seem so modern, because that kind of music has made a massive comeback in recent years, and every movie seems to be aping it. It's one of my all-time favorite scores, although it's worth noting that one of the best tracks, Confrontation, which scores the violent finale where Can takes out Prosky's associates, was actually done by Craig Saffin, who went on to score Rima Williams' The Adventure Begins and The Last Starfighter. As it stands, you can often see Thief show up on the Criterion channel, and you can buy it in a slick new Criterion Blu-ray or Arrow video in Region 2, which has both Mann's preferred director's cut and the original theatrical version. As usual for Michael Mann, the differences are pretty subtle, with some amounting to only frames being added or cut, although his cut has one of the best scenes in the movie added, which I'll let you check out for yourselves. Thief really is one of my all-time favorite movies, and as crime drama is probably my favorite genre, watching this is almost like a religious experience for me in some ways. So if you haven't had the opportunity to check it out, you're definitely missing one of the essential cinematic works of the last 50 years. And as far as James Caan goes, let me give you a couple more recommendations for awesome movies you can check out. So, of course, if we're talking about James Caan, one movie that you need to see is Norman Jewison's Rollerball, which was given a terrible remake by John McTiernan in the 2000s, starring Chris Klein in the James Caan role. It didn't quite work out, but the original Rollerball is something else, and Caan's physical performance in this is amazing. Ken also did another kind of cool action movie in the 70s called The Killer Elite, which was directed by Sam Peckinpah, but it was also directed by a substance called cocaine, which is why the movie is very messy, very unfocused, but also has a lot of martial arts action in it, and James Khan was actually a practicing martial artist at the time, and does all of his own fight scenes, and it's pretty cool. The main villain in this is played by Robert Duval, and the cool thing is that Khan, you see, is 
kind of quasi crippled in the movie so does most of his fighting with a leg brace and a cane i actually really like the fight scenes in this film but again sam peckinpah was on a lot of drugs when they made it so a lot of it makes no sense whatsoever Another James Caan movie that's a little bit hit and miss but was very influential is Freebie and the Bean, which co-starred Alan Arkin playing Puerto Rican. Yes, Alan Arkin as Puerto Rican. Now, this movie was very influential because it kind of started the buddy cop genre and has a couple of amazing car chases, but has not held up super well over the years, but is still worth checking out as kind of a curio. Of course, I also did a best movie you never saw on James Caan's Alien Nation, which I love. And then there's Misery. There's even a kind of a good Bette Midler movie he did called for the boys. So James Caan's career went on and on and on, and there are a lot of movies that are definitely worth checking out. We pay tribute to you, Mr. Caan. You can't take it easy, but to me, I enjoy working. I love to work with good people. I have more fun when I'm working, and I have a lot of laughs. laughs.